Okay, boys, um, this morning we're going to look at two objectives. The first one is to be able to... At St Luke's School for Special Provision in Swindon, they recognise dyslexic children have a problem ordering their thoughts, called sequencing. It's something founder of the Dyslexia Research Trust, Professor John Stein, recognises can affect every part of their lives. They find it very difficult to sequence things in order, either visually, the letters that make up a word, or auditorily, hearing the sounds in the right order. And that extends even out of reading into organising their own lives, for instance, keeping things on time or doing things in the right order and so on. So, I'm going to tell you the story of the gunpowder plot. Sequencing is a life skill. This kind of aspect that they're learning today can be the, the same as the routine that they take in the morning to get ready for school. The most important thing for teaching a dyslexic child about sequencing is to use multi-sensory ways of doing it. Use every way you can. Joe Hale and teacher Lisa Bailey are using a range of multi-sensory techniques to teach the story of Guy Fawkes. Sequence them in the right order as I tell you the story. Right? You're going to do this in pairs. Professor Stein has examined the reason dyslexics find it hard to sequence ideas. Their brains are wired in a different way, uh, not in a damaging way, but just a different way. She decided to put a whole load of rules in for the Catholics. So we now know that there's a down-regulation of some genes, for instance, which should be telling nerve cells where to go during development that just don't perform quite so well in dyslexics, and so the brain tends to be slightly miswired, in a sense. In front of you, you've got a brainstorming map. I want you to listen to this soundtrack. I want you to come up with anything at all on that map that these sounds make you think of. It can be things One of the sensory techniques Joe uses to help the pupils remember the story is to play them a fireworks soundscape. If you have um, music and movement, you will remember it better. Um, you need lots and lots of different kinds of information, all associating with the one word, Guy Fawkes, to, to enable them to remember it all. What I want you to do in groups now is see if you can retell the story of the gunpowder plot and create about one or maybe two sentences for each picture. When you're teaching dyslexic pupils, it will take considerably longer for them to learn any aspect of the project that you're working on. And it's quite possible that what you've taught them, you'll then have to repeat another time to them. The ability to retain information can be poor. Joe has the pupils physically record the story again to emphasise its chronology. OK, who's this, who's this man? Guy has got anger with the Protestants. OK, do you think you can say that into there? What is it? What was it, Luke? Guy Fawkes got angry. It's important that when they're using their auditory skills that they have something kinesthetic that they can relate to, the, to their auditory skills. It supports their ability to be able to process the thoughts in their head. Guy Fawkes didn't write the rules. OK. Let's listen back to that one. Guy Fawkes didn't write the rules. Very clear, you sound good. OK, are you ready? I'd just like to have a little check with Miss Bailey's group here to see if they have really managed to sequence the story and understand the facts. So let's listen. They're hoping that the next king will be more friendly to them, but no, it's even worse than Queen Elizabeth I. Sequencing is absolutely vital for for pupils with dyslexic tendencies. Well done, boys. You guys have been very patient and covered a lot of work today. It's the repetition and the overlearning 
in sequence or in a way that they can cope that is absolutely key for them retaining information, for becoming independent learners.